Hello everybody, I am more to me for life and we are in a server. Yes, we are in seven days to die and we're in a server. This is the group server that I've been playing around with. Uh, I just wanted to pop in here and show the differences between what you can do in a regular game and what you can do in a server. And there are reasons for this because there are comments that are asking me questions that I need answers to. So therefore, I'm going to give you a peek as to what can or, you know, may not happen in a server. One thing that can happen in a server is you can get a lot of people to working towards one goal. Assuming those people can work towards one goal. But uh, when you get a lot of people collecting resources and working towards something, then things become a whole lot easier. Particularly if you have someone who's got an idea and you're like, hey, can I get help with this? And they're like, yeah. So uh, first off, I want to apologize for the graphics of the game right now. I have got these settings as best as I can for this particular video so that I don't get the choppiness that I had uh, during... Yeah, I don't need to go that way. Here, let me turn around right quick. I just wanted to show you a quick horde base. Now, the horde base itself is a complete ripoff of the Killing Corridor from Jay Woodle, or Josh, or however you want to say his name. Jay Woodle is it's pretty cool. Don't, don't do it. I know you're going to do it. These bridges like to uh, tease you with they are open when they're not actually open. Come on. Close. There you go. There you go. There we go. I don't like going across until I've seen it come up once because it it, it shows that it's down, but as soon as you try to cross it, it comes up and then it, it throws you through the map. Anyway, I do apologize for the graphics because right now... The game is running as smooth as chunky peanut butter. So, uh, I don't know what it is. I don't know what I'm running wrong or whatever, but it is just not working right. Okay, this is my interpretation of the killing corridor. Let me see where my camera is according to the... Okay. Um, basically, it is the exact same thing as the killing corridor that is shown on the Jay Woodle channel. The difference is it's a lot bigger because there's a lot more people who have to be up there during a horde night. And right now it's got a bit of battle damage. As you can see, there are blocks here that need repairing and stuff like that. Uh, demolishers and everything else. Um, I'm going to quickly show our game stage. I'm going to blur out other names in case other people don't want their names shown. But our game stage... Uh, let me get in here. Skills, map, no. People! Alright, the game stage is 228. And my level is a 95. I, I'm actually doing, you know, all right. I'm doing all right. Don't pay any attention to the player kills. That has nothing to do with... <laughs> I didn't kill anybody, I swear. Uh, that's a lie. I, I've killed somebody. A couple of times, actually. Um, so anyway, uh, we have all got to stand over here. I've got this right here for whenever I need to do repairs. I take it up during the actual horde night. But uh, it, it's, really, it's really a death trap whenever you try to... If you fall, you are going to sprain a leg at the very, very least. There is a bladed hull of misery down there right now. And uh, whenever we first started, we didn't have the blades down there. It worked just fine without them. But uh, we were getting hordes that were, I don't know, over 100 zombies is what it felt like. And uh, we've got the bars up here for, you know, vultures and whatever. And we've got lights up there. Occasionally, one of us will get uh, crazy and put like a one of those little junk turrets up there and have it shoot over our heads or whatever, but there was one glitch whenever I first realized what a junk turret was, and I placed the junk turret above me, and at some point during the battle, it phased through the ground and took me with it, because I was standing right underneath it to make sure that it would operate. It phased through the ground and went to the bunker below. Both of us in the middle of a horde fell through the map and into the bunker below. It was interesting. It was very, very interesting. So let me go this way. I've got these like textures and everything going on because it looks like there's supposed to be fire going through there. Can we not have a fire trap? I mean, it could look like a turret. I mean, you could use some of the same uh, textures as a turret or whatever, but you know, you add gasoline to it. Is that a thing we can get? I think it would be cool. Anyway, uh, we've got turrets over here. It took me a while to figure out how to work these guys, but they do a pretty decent amount of damage and these are supposed to keep them from harming this material right here, and it keeps them off of it pretty well. Most of this is from demolishers and uh, things like that exploding, and we've got these guys to try and hurt them a little bit as they're coming in. But basically, that's the, the killing corridor, 
and uh, it looks like the biggest, ugliest pup tent ever that their army could put down. So that's, that's that part. Now, let me show you the rest of the killing corridor, the way that I created it, just because I felt like it would be easier for all of us not ever knowing when someone's going to pop into a server. If someone was to spawn in, in the middle of a Horde Knight, which we do let each other know that a Horde Knight is coming, so, you know, they can, they can choose whether or not to come into the corridor, or there's a secondary entrance way over there. It's kind of camouflaged, so kind of hard to see, but we're fixing to go down there anyway. And I've got hay at the bottom of this, ha ha, and it goes all the way up there. And this, we're not going to talk about this because this was an awesome present from a couple of friends and I'm just going to leave that alone. And uh, yeah, it was funny and I gave them absolute utter shit for it, but I loved it. It was cool. There's a container here with extra meds, medicine, because there's nothing worse than getting into a horde night and realizing I didn't go and get food, I didn't get water, I don't have any medicine on me. And there is like some repair kits in case somebody didn't bring any, extra ammo, that kind of thing. And a bit of lighting. I did have it to where we were doing the bed rolls down here. That way if we died we'd respawn closer instead of back in town where zombies could potentially spawn on top of you and ruin our entire town. Uh, but they seem to cause a problem with spawning in the zombie horde. We went like two hordes without zombies because our beds were down here. It was really weird. I didn't think it would affect a zombie horde. But anyway, this goes all the way out to here. Completely reinforced concrete. It's awesome, and I say that because everybody in the server put together all of the stuff for this. The whole time I was building, they were out collecting, they were pushing everything through the machines. It was amazing. It was, a, it was an amazing piece of work here. This is not just done by me. It was... Uh, it was definitely a group effort. And then uh, we have got... Show off my base too. Okay, okay. I can do that. I can do that. And then we have got the electricity outlet, which of course I put the hay down here just in case you miss the ladder because you never know when that's going to happen. Oh, there's actually damage right there. Is that the... Okay, it's just the ladder. And here's our electricity feeding through all kinds of interesting wires plus some extra gas. I don't know why there's overalls and plant fibers in here, but you know, I'm not going to ask any questions. People on the server are allowed to do what they want to. If they want to get down here, dress like a farmer, and then uh, chew on grass, that's that's cool. <clears throat> Who am I to judge? Alright, so that's the killing corridor that we made in our server. It is huge. Now, I was very, very terrified that... Uh, in the videos, he's always talking about keeping it low to ground because they might uh, cause problems with the pathing. I want to tell you, there is no pathing issues. They still very much find their way up there. There is a bit of damage that the whole base takes in general because of things just hitting it, exploding in the corridor, and things like that. It's just, it takes a bit of wear and tear every now and then. I'm going to walk across and put my actual cursor on there. This is after a horde night. And you can see some of these have taken a pretty substantial amount. Some of this is upgraded to steel, some of it is not because we just ran out at that particular time. But all of it, all in all, from one horde night to another, they don't take a huge amount of damage. There were some mines over there, but for some reason or another, nobody's tripping them. I haven't seen them run over them. They usually come from behind, over there, or over in that direction. They don't come over the hill. I don't know. Okay, now the next thing to show would be the greenhouse. And I'm currently working on a moat type of thing to go all the way around the base to protect against wandering hordes, but of course we don't have everybody's bedrolls here, so we don't exactly have complete coverage of the area. So I'm kind of being a little bit woo cheeky I'm using a bit of, not necessarily cheating methods, I mean, it's a developmental flaw with the zombies themselves. And since the zombies are so smart, I'm okay with them being dumb about this one thing. And that's these. I use the uh, zombie force field to, to keep them from coming across here because we've got a lot of stuff going on. We've got a shooting range, we've got our actual home base, we've got, I don't know what you would call that, demolition zone? But over here is something else that I did. And it was a lot of fun to work on. It's not complete, but it is a work in progress. And that is our awesome garden. 
this garden right here, after after harvesting everything in here, makes, I don't know, level 3 meals. It makes about 10 to 20 level 3 meals. And that is on the low end of how much this thing can produce. We've got, oh, I'm getting frame drops, okay. Uh, we've got the corn, the super corn, which I haven't unlocked the ability to use any of the super corn, which is really frustrating. And we've got everything in here. The only thing I haven't found is hops. I don't, I don't know what I've got to do to find hops, but I'll eventually find some and I'll add those to the garden too. I want to put a roof on this thing with the bars across it and then put my bedroll over the top of it to protect this area because the zombies do see this as a spot where they can get in here and fiddle around. They like to bang on the walls, as you can see, but they don't actually spawn inside, so I think it's pretty good. Uh, it's going to be dark before I get a chance to go show you the other base, but I'm going to try and get out there and show it to you. Okay, it's, it's dark, but I hope it's still visible because I wasn't expecting to come out here and show this, but uh, since he has given me permission to show this and actually wants me to show it, I'm going to go ahead and show the... Um, I'm not sure what you would call this. They have dubbed it the Titty Twister. I think it should be called the Nipple Nuzzler, but that's just me. Uh, there was a vote. I was voted out. I still think they... They really missed an opportunity here by not calling it the Nipple Nuzzler. Anyway, uh, not for kids. Not This channel's not for kids, guys. Alright, uh... I'm not precisely sure. I haven't actually been here when the horde came in, but from the way they described it, the cord, the horde, the cord, the horde usually shows up from the left and the right, and they come across here. And I am assuming, I'm, I'm not sure why the posts are like this. I thought maybe the posts would be coming across, but then again, maybe they come in from the sides. So they get in here, and they have to go very, very slow through here. And there are some blade traps underneath here, causing all kinds of problems. And of course, there's the electric fence under there. So they sit back here. And they can shoot. Uh, there's not really a way of handling the vultures, I guess. There's, there's not really a way up, is there? Or a way to shoot through the top. Looks like they've got a turret there. There's their electricity here. Uh, and they've got these little things right here protecting all the conduits to make sure they don't get hit by the cops. They did a whole lot of playing with it. There's like decorations all over it. Let me see if I can get all the way around. Uh, it looks like they might be missing a panel here. Can, can I climb up? Can I climb up? Oh my god. I'm gonna drown. Oh, and there's, uh, there's spikes under the water. Under the water. Can I, can I get out? Please, can I get out of the water? Whew. Anyway. I, I would guess that the water is acting as a death trap as well. So there's that base. And um, everybody on here has kind of got their own pet project that they're working on. Uh, there's a couple of people who have their own bases. We've got one guy who's still working on his base. Uh, mine's kind of the home base. It's where I've been starting since the beginning. It's what I've been playing with since the... The very, very beginning. Um, so that is basically the way the server has been working. We're kind of spread out. We've we discovered most of the map at this particular point. And um, I'm not sure exactly when we'll be resetting the server to start back over. The discussion has started, but there's also still people who are on here that are still kind of new to the game and they're still learning the ropes of the game. So we're giving them a chance to spread their wings to have a chance to get on here in order to learn. That way when we start the next server, maybe we can make it harder. Like zombies always running, not as, not as much experience, not as many airdrops, because those guys get annoying when you've got 5,000 airdrops uh, just showing up all over the hood. The hood. Hey, trader. How you doing? All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of the tour for the server playthrough. There are talks of possibly getting a server for Patreons. And the reason why it'd be locked behind a Patreon thing is because it basically to weed out people who want to troll other people. If you are invested in the server, you're less likely to come in and just blow everybody's stuff up and leave. Uh, you'd also be more inclined to come into the server and be a productive member of the server instead of just coming in 
walking around, eating up the food, using up the bullets, you would actually go out and collect stuff and bring it in or build a base, build something, do things in a server if you were actually invested in it. So basically the any of the money that would come from being a Patreon would go towards any moderators of the server because we would have to have more than one person possibly to reset the server and to make sure that other people are not trolling other people. So I would want to be able to give them a portion of the money to say, hey, during these days, could you kind of keep an eye on the server, let people hit you up in Discord if it needs to be reset, or hit them up in Discord if there's being a, a member who is just trolling everybody on the server. That would be awesome to be able to actually be able to give them some money for having done that. Um, I have someone who is offering to get a server in order to play, but I need to know that there's actually interest before I set one up. So if you are interested, either leave something down in the comment section, visit us on Patreon. It's patreon.com slash more to me for life. I'll leave a link down in the description for you. Uh, just take a look at it. There's no need to actually invest in this. It's just a thought because I've had a lot of people asking me about it. And I've tried to figure out the best way to weed out people who aren't legitimately interested in playing on a server. My thoughts on a server is, first off, it would have to be... The settings would have to be on hard because this... What we've done here is a bit easy, especially for people who... Well, let me take that back. It was not easy to begin with because a lot of us didn't know what we were doing. Especially as a server gameplay, we all wound up investing perks all together in the same general areas because we didn't quite understand what we were going for but um i would love to do a harder gameplay preferably a role-playing server uh that that's my personal preference i would love to do some role-playing and maybe during specific days or during specific times we can set up to record and it wouldn't just be me recording so if there's other youtubers who are interested in a role-playing server and wanting to get in on this let me know um I do have the Patreon. You can message me on Patreon. I have a comment section, but um, of course there's a lot of comments down there, so I'm going to have to filter through comments to find people who are legitimately interested. So uh, my Discord is Patreon locked, and there's a reason for that. I can't have 5,000 people just hanging out on Patreon. My husband would probably... I don't know. He would probably lose bolts out of his head if I was just talking to random people all of the time. Uh, so... If it's like someone who is actually invested in, this would be like a channel kind of thing. Patreons would be on there. The Patreons would be able to record if they wanted to during recording sessions. That way everybody knows we get in, we build, work, whatever for like a couple of horde weeks, you know? And then we start the, the role playing. People can get in there and record. They can get some really good footage and they can do cinematics if they want to. I, I'm not really good at doing cinematics. I, I don't edit that well and I'm definitely not good at audio recording. So that's probably not my forte. It would just be like kind of touching base with this is what we're doing on the server and those kind of videos. But if somebody's interested in a server where you do role playing, that would be an awesome place to be. Uh, so a little bit of an investment for a role playing server and it would be a difficult server for those who are interested in a chilled, relaxed gameplay. Probably not the best server, but I need to know that ahead of time. And I need to let the person who knows, who can get us a server, let them know that we would like to get a server. So just let me know. And no strain one way or the other. Nobody is, nobody has to do this. I, I feel bad pushing this as a Patreon thing. But as I said, it's to weed out people who aren't actually interested and to weed out trolls. I, I don't want anybody trolling anybody else. The game is stressful enough on a normal basis to not have people trolling each other. Um... But uh, it would also be cool to make sure that we set up some rules and stuff like that. So it's kind of a thing that we need to get going on because some rules and limitations and uh, guidelines can be set up in enough time to push this forward, I guess. I, I don't know. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I just, I really don't know exactly how this is going to work, but I know I am interested in trying it because I would love a role-playing server. I would love to get on here with other people who are very interested in the game and being able to role-play characters, that to me would be so much daggum fun. Um, so 
I don't know. Y'all let me know down in the comment section. Let me know what you think about the Killing Corridor as re-envisioned as a bigger, badder base. Ja Woodle, I'm looking at you. No, I'm joking. I'm, I'm just picking on him and his purple stuffs. And, uh, yeah, and the greenhouse is, is my baby. I love my, I love my greenhouses. This is actually, I don't know, I'm prouder of this than I am the Killing Corridor. It's stupid, I know. I'm such a chick. God. I can't help it. I just can't help it. Anyway, I will see y'all next time. You have a wonderful day, a wonderful night, and you stay shiny.